Hi there, my name's Simon Drew and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast, where I give you practical stoic advice for modern times. If you'd like to see more information about the podcast, or if you'd like to see more of my free resources, you can go to my website, it's risetothegoodlife.com. If you have been getting a lot of value out of this podcast, then please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this, and leave a positive review. But for now, enjoy this episode. Hi there, my name's Simon Drew, and welcome to the Practical Stoic Podcast. I just wanted to quickly start off this episode by reading a few more reviews that I've gotten for the podcast, because I'm really grateful to everybody who's actually taken the time to go out there and review the podcast online. It is really helpful to those who are sort of looking for a new way to learn about stoicism. It's a good way for them to understand if, if this is going to be a good fit for them. And so I really appreciate the time that people have taken to actually go out there and review this podcast. So the first review that I wanted to read comes from somebody in Sweden, which is awesome. It's great to see the Swedish coming in here and listening to the podcast. So they said, I'm new to the study of Stoicism and the Practical Stoic podcast is a perfect complement to reading and has already helped me in my understandings of Stoic ideas and practice. Simon is easy to listen to and explains complex things in an easy and straightforward manner. The 10 to 15 minute episodes covering a simple topic are perfect for me, easy to squeeze in when commuting or in between other duties. So thank you so much for that review. I really appreciate your support and keep on listening. So another review comes from Bob in the United States, and he says, Simon is not only informative regarding Stoic principles and history, but he also provides relevant examples of using Stoic practices in daily action. The podcast has really helped to ground me and helps me with perspective regarding daily events. So thank you so much, Bob, for that wonderful review. I appreciate it and keep on listening. And I'll read one more review. This comes from Joe in the United Kingdom. Awesome. He says, if you want to be more resilient and enjoy life, then stoicism is a great way to do so. I fully agree. He goes on and says, this podcast breaks down the main lessons from the stoics in an easy to digest way that makes it very easy to get started with stoicism. The best stoicism podcast I've listened to. Joe, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate your support and I trust that you keep on listening because there's plenty more to come. Anyway, that's all the reviews that I'll read today. I'll read some more in future episodes. But for now, please enjoy this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. One of the most incredible books that I ever read is called Man's Search for Meaning, and it was written by a Jewish psychologist called Viktor Frankl. I'm sure many of you will have heard about this man because he is often quoted among Stoic communities. And the reason for this is because many of his theories about life align beautifully with Stoic teachings. For those of you who don't know about Viktor Frankl or his work, I should tell you that he was actually a survivor of the Auschwitz concentration camp during World War II. And his book, Man's Search for Meaning, is basically a recollection of his time in the camp. Throughout the book, he discusses lessons that he learned and the patterns that he saw in the people around him. If you haven't already read the book, then do yourself a favor and buy it right now. But the main reason why I'm starting this podcast talking about Viktor Frankl is because of one of his theories, which aligns well with Stoic teachings. See, in his time in the concentration camp, Frankl made a really profound observation. What he found was that the difference between people who survived and people who didn't often had to do with one thing, and that one thing was purpose. People who had no purpose, no meaning, no strong reason to survive would often not last, whereas those who had a strong purpose for their life would often hold strong and would last longer, because they were holding on to something important, something in their life that could pull them through those incredibly difficult and seemingly hopeless times. These purposes that he talked about could be, among other things, having a loved one outside the camp, the promise of a thriving career or having some invention in mind that they simply had to bring to the world. The purpose itself didn't really matter, but what mattered was that there was a purpose, a meaning, a worthy goal. So now that most of us hopefully are living relatively peaceful lives, is it still important for us to find purpose and meaning in life? I would argue, as would Frankel, 
that it's not only important, but it's essential. Here is a passage from his book. He said, quote, Mental health is based on a certain degree of tension, the tension between what one has already achieved and what one still ought to accomplish, or the gap between what one is and what one should become. Such a tension is inherent in the human being and therefore is indispensable to mental well-being. We should not, then, be hesitant about challenging man with a potential meaning for him to fulfill. What man actually needs is not a tensionless state, but rather the striving and struggling for a worthwhile goal, a freely chosen task. What he needs is not a discharge of tension at any cost, but the call of a potential meaning waiting to be fulfilled by him. End quote. Often the times when we are happiest and most fulfilled in life are the times when we are working towards something that brings great meaning into our life. And on the contrary, times when we are stressed and feeling down are often times when there is no meaning, no worthy goal on the horizon. When given a strong purpose, there is no limit to what mankind can accomplish. But without purpose, humanity lays dormant. Funnily enough, the Stoics also taught that we should seek out worthwhile purposes in life. Marcus Aurelius said, quote, Do external things distract you? Then make time for yourself to learn something worthwhile. Stop letting yourself be pulled in all directions. People who labor all their lives but have no purpose to direct every thought and impulse toward are wasting their time, even when hard at work. So my main question to you in this episode is this. What is your purpose? What brings meaning into your life? Is it your career, your family, a book that you want to write, your church? Do you want to change the world or do you simply want to be the best version of yourself? Having a purpose that brings meaning to every day is one of the surest ways to build confidence and self-esteem in your life. Having a purpose will excite you in the good times and encourage you through the bad times. It's also really important to note that it's not the achievement of a purpose that we need, but rather it is the striving for that purpose that is important. It's the journey, with all the ups and downs, that brings meaning to what you do. The struggle is essential to ultimate happiness, and without the struggle, then the end goal would be meaningless. And the good news is that if the purpose is strong, then the struggle doesn't seem like a struggle at all. Jim Rohn had a similar message when he said that if the promise is clear, then the price is easy. If you will cultivate in your life a strong and clear vision of who you are supposed to be and what you are supposed to contribute to this world, then any price that you have to pay in order to fulfill that purpose will seem cheap. I believe that one of the major downfalls of modern society is that it leads people into a trap where they end up spending the greater majority of their time working in a job that they hate so that they can buy nice things and feel good about their position in society. We find jobs instead of purpose. We look for ways to make more money instead of looking for more ways that we can contribute meaningfully to the greater community. We have replaced purpose with objects. We have replaced meaning with a nice house, a fancy car, and a golden watch as a retirement gift. This kind of life is one of the surest paths to depression and anxiety, as we can see clearly with most first world nations having higher rates of depression than other third world nations. Now, this is not to say that there is anything wrong with working a steady job until retirement, but you must also have a strong purpose, something that makes you excited to be alive something that pushes you to become a better person. I'd like to challenge you to think about your own life and think about what your true purpose is. Look past the objects and nice things and jobs and simply ask yourself, why are you here? If you were put on this planet for one thing, what would that one thing be? If you could just do one thing for the rest of your life, what would you do? If you could be paid to contribute something to the greater community, what would you contribute? As a Stoic, it is very important that you know who you are and how you are supposed to contribute to humanity, whether that be in a big or a small way. I'll leave you thinking about that, and I'll also give you one last quote from Viktor Frankl. He said, Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. I really appreciate your support and I'm so grateful that you're the kind of person who's trying to become better in life, trying to make yourself a better person. If you have any feedback or if you'd like to suggest an idea for a future topic on the podcast, then you can go to my website and send me an email. It's rise to the good life.com. Anyway, I'll talk to you next time, but for now, I hope that this episode has helped you on your rise to the good life. Ciao. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Practical Stoic Podcast. I hope that you've gotten a lot of value out of it, and I hope that it helps you to live a better life. If you have been enjoying this podcast, then don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you're listening to this and leave a positive review so that other people can have the chance to listen to this great work. Don't forget that you can see more free resources on my website at risetothegoodlife.com or on Facebook at Practical Stoic Quotes.